this rhetoric that y'all sing out y'all mouth. I don't have a problem with those cowboys. It's their fans. Like cockroaches. Get on my nerves. Damn cowboy fans make me sick. The most disgusting, nauseating fan base in American history. It's just noise. Y'all won two playoff games in 25 years, and you're going to sit up here, stick it up your chest, talk about it's the dawn of a new day. Y'all ain't nothing. Last time y'all was something, my hand was with two feet forward. You should be ashamed of yourself, buddy. You should be ashamed of yourself. It's you should be ashamed of yourself. Don't stand up like you're going to do something. Yeah. But when you go to history, let's go into history. Don't just go to your history. Let's go to the history. I am taking over his show. I'm sweating around. Why am I sweating? Let him mop off. Let's take a break. Let's pay some bills. I ain't going to. Michael, Michael. I ain't going to run in my city. Y'all come right on back. I'm going to still be right here. Let me down. Let me down. <laughs> Do the Cowboys have a chance of beating the Saints? <laughs> Thanks for the joke. <laughs> At some point in time, they have to accept the reality that over the last half, a quarter century, I'm sorry, they've been pretty close to irrelevant. That is the bottom line. I'm not apologizing for saying it. That's how I feel. The city is great. The citizens of the city is great. The state is great. It's no state income tax here. I like Dallas until it comes to them damn Cowboy fans. Now, everybody here ain't Cowboy fans now. You got some people in Dallas that don't like the Dallas Cowboys because they recognize what I recognize, that they could go 1-15 and wake up the next morning and say, you know we're going to win the Super Bowl next year, right? They disgust me with that stuff. That's my issue. It's not about the team. It's about them damn fans. I've said it since I was a kid. I'm saying it now and I will say it till the day I die. I can't stand them for that reason. Damn them cowboys. There's a silver lining to all of this Max Kellerman and Molly Karam and I'm going to tell you what that silver lining oh, is. Lord. I'm going to tell you what it is. First of all, a dead clock is right twice a day. Let's get that out of the way right now. Damn them cowboys. The defense is elite. There's no question about it. They showed up. They shut me up. That's good. Fine. You deserve all the props in the world, but you know what comes with it now? expectations. And every time you expect something from the Dallas Cowboys, they screw up. And I'm predicting that's exactly what's going to happen. It's all right. They got me today. They got me today. Okay. They got me. All right. But I ain't taking this no more. I, 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 I gave my Mia Copa. All right. I gave them their props. But damn it, it ain't lasting. The hell with the Cowboys. Them damn fans. They still make me sick. I actually wish I was in Dallas today. Right now. I'm not scared to be no, around those people. They got me today. But only today. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not going to sit up here and act like, oh, my God, there's so much to look forward to. I'm so excited about basketball at Madison Square Garden. When the hell have I had a reason to be excited about basketball at Madison Square Garden? Kimball Walker's a bad brother, man. This dude is something special. I'd love to have Kimber Walker. Everybody be talking about these superstars, these superstars. You know what? LeBron, you're going to get Kawhi Leonard to come to L.A. You're going to get Kevin Durant to come to L.A. You know what? What if they got somebody like a Kawhi but a Kimber Walker too? Kimber Walker's only getting paid $12 million a year in the last year of his deal. Michael Jordan's got to do everything he can to keep Kimber Walker. Mitch Cupcho's got to do everything. Former Jet Lakers GM. Got to do everything he can to keep Kimber Walker. Kimber Walker is a star. Brother special. He really is. I'm just saying. I'm just going to say it like it is. Markel Fultz ain't ready. He's got to be better. I'm rooting for the kid. I'm not rooting against him. But somehow, some way, somebody's got to look Markel Fultz in the, in the face at some point in time and say, my brother, the only thing you've made noise about in your basketball career is that you showed up at the BET Awards with Kevin Hart. That's it. That's it. We got game one of this NBA season last night.
And what am I seeing from Markel Fultz? I'm seeing a Philadelphia 76ers team that does not have Wilson Chandler, who is hurt. That's still sad, that still has Dario Sarix. That's got Ben Simmons giving you damn near a triple-double with 19, 15, and 8. That has Joel Embiid struggling but trying his butt off. That's got J.J. Redick, who's coming off the bench now because of you, Markel Fultz. And make no mistake, it's a favor. Because Markel Fultz is not better than J.J. Redick yet. He's not as skilled as J.J. Redick yet. He's not as smart of a basketball player as J.J. Redick is yet. He's not as accomplished as J.J. Redick is yet. He's not as professional as J.J. Redick is yet. So the only reason why you got J.J. Redick coming off the bench is because the Philadelphia 76ers know that in order for them to be successful, they're going to need Markel Fultz to step up and be that number one pick who is a scoring machine in college who doesn't need the basketball. Somebody making plays for him. It's a great quality home win. Hold on, hold on, hold on. For the Los so, Angeles do I get a drink? Do you have a drink for me? Yeah, me while I listen to this, it, 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 while I listen to this right there. Go ahead, go ahead. It, it was a great quality home win right, for right. the Los Angeles Lakers. Right, right. Both teams were coming off back to backs. Mm -hmm. The Lakers actually discovered right. something with right. Co with uh, Ingram and Rondo being out. Uh -huh. Let's not forget that Barton is also out for the Nuggets, mm. and one team had LeBron James. And understand oh, who's going to oh, be I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't, I, I don't want to interrupt. I don't want to interrupt the soliloquy. I don't want to interrupt the soliloquy. Hold on for a second here. Yeah, help yourself. This is very nice. It's, it's just very water. Nice. Yeah. Very, let me say this. I just want to, I don't want to interrupt the soliloquy. Did you just say, and they have LeBron James? Because that's what I said. <laughs> I mean, that's what I, I, I do recall my saying that prior to the season when you said the Denver Nuggets are going to be I, I'm better. Not, I'm not. They have not won a playoff game in the 15 years that Marvin Lewis has been a head coach. To me, it's a damn travesty that that man is a head coach in Cincinnati. I'm not saying he doesn't belong to be a head coach in the NFL, Max. I'm saying in Cincinnati, if you go 15 years without winning a damn playoff game and you still get to keep your job, I mean, you talk, uh, uh, listen, uh, this, ooh, don't get me started. I don't even want to say what I was tempted to say because it would go too deep. Yeah, it would go do too it. deep. I don't want to go there. Don't but I'm going to tell you something right now. And I'm, and I'm looking at Cincinnati Biggest Fan because mm. some of these people call into my radio show. Some of them stop me on the show. I don't know how the hell there's Cincinnati Biggest Fans outside of Cincinnati. That's just me. But I'll, say, I'll take it. Don't come up to me. Don't email. Don't call. Don't Instagram. Tweet. Face. Don't you dare. Talk to me about the Cincinnati Bengals being a contender. You know when I'll answer that question? And I don't even want you all presenting a damn question to me again. I will never answer that question about the Cincinnati Bengals until Wait. they win a playoff game. See, this is moments like this <clears throat> where I really, really miss being a reporter. Could you imagine if he sat up there and talked? You're going to tell me how to do my job. You're going to tell me not to. I can understand you not commenting. I can understand you saying no comment. I can understand you saying you're not talking about that no more. You're going to look a reporter in the face and tell him, don't ask me again. Like you're going to do something if he did ask you. Man, ooh, ooh uh, there's moments like that where I, I, I really, really, really miss being that guy at, at, at that report. At that person. Can you imagine? If you're going, to, you're going to dare me to ask you, I'd have shut everybody down and asked the same question over and over and over. Like, what you think you're going to do if I ask you? What are you talking about? You don't have to answer, but you're going to tell me what to ask and what not to ask? So, in other words, you on the bench and you upset because Draymond, get, you didn't go hard at Draymond, but you're going to go hard at a reporter. I mean, it's just, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jimmy Butler. A Philadelphia 76ers. This is what I'm talking about right here. See, this is why I love the NBA so much. This is what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. We've been talking about Boston. We've been talking about Toronto. We've been talking about Milwaukee. But now it's about the Philadelphia 76ers. They got a dog in the city of brotherly love. You're talking about Joel and B. You want it to be league MVP. There's no excuse now. There's nothing standing in your way. Ben Simmons, you're a jump shot away from being a champion because you, with Embiid, with Butler, can make that 
kind of noise. Either way you slice it, I love what I'm seeing. I love what's going on right now. The great freaking Milwaukee. We'll see. We'll see Toronto with Kawhi Leonard. We'll see. We'll see the Boston Celtics with the crew. Tatum, Jalen Brown, Kyrie Irving, the whole bit. It doesn't matter anymore. This is what it's all about. This is basketball, baby. Jimmy Butler, a member of the Philadelphia 76ers. A dog is in the house. A dog is in the house. Joel, Ben Simmons, y'all don't play. You think he called out Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins. Wait till what he does with y'all. If you don't show up, you got to show up. Oh, I'll see y'all in Philly. Very, very soon. I'm out. The Washington Wizards is making noise, making news rather, because according to our very own Adrian Wojnarowski, as I told y'all last week, bodies are about to be moved. The Washington Wizards look like straight garbage. Straight garbage. Bradley Beal has tremendous value because he's three years younger than John Wall and his contract ends two years earlier than John Wall. John Wall doesn't even have a $169.3 million contract extension that has kicked in yet. It kicks in next year. So he's getting 38, 41, 43, 44 million over the next four years starting next year. And was playing like garbage himself until he got called out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm told he's not very, very happy with me because I had the temerity, the unmitigated gall to bring up the fact that he was in the club partying the night or two before the, the season started. Seen drinking out of a bottle of Cristal or, or Chirac or whatever the hell it was. And I guess I'm getting blamed for that because uh, I'm diming him out. Let me say this for the record. I did no such thing. I didn't dime anybody out. The damn thing was on TMZ for three days. I don't do that. That's not how I roll. I'm not trying to get into people's personal business and personal life. All I care about is that you're balling. Or if you're not, you're not balling. I don't get into all of those particulars. Unless it gets publicized. Once it gets publicized, that's your behind. Because what the hell are you doing doing something like that in public? The end of the day, you know one thing one day we're going to have to get in a real conversation about? We're going to have to get into a real conversation about this. And it's not going to be comfortable, but it's necessary. And you know what that conversation is? You know what that conversation is? We need to have a serious conversation about who's really, really worth max dollars. There's this notion that teams just got to give out, you know, max dollars, you know, because why? Because you know what? They're the face of a franchise and that's what the market bears. Says who? Says who? John Walls is an, is an all-star. And by the way, regardless of how you might be feeling about me at this moment, a really good dude. But can he be a bit prima donnish? Yes. Has that been said about him in the past? Yes. Has he alienated coaches and teammates in the process? Yes. And as a result, is he worth 38 to 40 million a year? Hell no. Now, that doesn't mean he can't play. It doesn't mean that he's some scrub. He's not. He can play. But should he be better at this point? Yes. Should he have come into camp overweight and out of shape? No. No. 